Let's begin by singing.
Good morning and welcome. That's not supposed to be there. We're out of order. Oh, there we go. Scripture for today comes from Mark, the, fourth, the 13th chapter, where Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Anybody know what Alpha and Omega means? <clears throat> the beginning and the end. That's right. <clears throat> and so that's the two, that's the alpha is the beginning of the Greek alphabet. You didn't know you are going to have Greek today, did you? But alpha is the Greek letter and omega is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. So, uh, then he goes on to say, uh, who is and who was and who is to come. So from all time past, all time present, all time into the future. And uh, so I was thinking this week, uh, where? my slides have really gotten messed up. So a so question for you is, what are some things that have a beginning and an end? A book. A book. A life. Story, life, a journey. journey. Hey, that's a good one. I like that one. Alphabet. The alphabet. Oh, alpha and omega. Very good. See, right on top of it there. Yep. Yeah. So those are some of the things I came up with too. So a movie or um, a basketball game has a beginning and an end. And uh, do you like shoots and ladders? Yep. Board game. The board games have beginnings and ends. Yep. <clears throat> so that's an homage to my granddaughter. So she's, that's her favorite movie. <laughs> yeah, so, so these are all things that have a start and a beginning. And they have uh, um, <clears throat> the time in between, right? Well, we're, that's what we're in right now. We're in the time between. From the time that God created until the time that somewhere in the future, Jesus says, I'm going to come back because I'm the end as well. And so we, uh, we are thankful that Jesus is the one who can remind us because time has a beginning and an end as well, right? There's a beginning and end of the calendar, but time started a long time ago and it, we don't know how long it's going to go, right? Because Jesus doesn't, didn't, didn't tell us. God doesn't tell us. <clears throat> but we can trust that between yesterday and today and tomorrow, during that whole period of time, Jesus is always with us. And we are grateful that we may not know, one of my favorite sayings is, we may not know what tomorrow brings, but we know who holds tomorrow. And who holds tomorrow is our God and our King. And today is the last Sunday in the church year, and we celebrate this Sunday as Christ the King Sunday. So next, next week, we start a whole other year over again. But interestingly enough, um, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the promise of Jesus is that we don't know when He will return, but we know that He is all of that time, and we are part of that time with Him. And so we can trust in that. So, heading for our questions, we start with, uh, did you have a low point this week? I did, when I completely lost my voice. But share with uh, someone around you a low from your week. <clears throat> Third time I took prednisone, and my head went. <laughs> wow, that's not a very good drug for me. <clears throat> but I was like, I came in, and Patty's like, "What's wrong with you?" I said, "What do you mean?" She's shooting all the all these emails. I was like, "I'm on prednisone." <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Oh, this week. I I did. My desk came in. Um, at the beginning of the week, and I got a computer the very next day, 
and so they got me all hooked back up and we moved my desk so it was the direction I wanted it in and I still didn't have a filing cabinet but this weekend my husband helped me move my filing cabinet in. <laughs> they didn't give us permission to have file cabinets yet but I need my file cabinet so I took it up my own and so that was my plus too was to get that done and get some stuff in the filing cabinet which took me all Saturday but uh, yeah. It's worth it for the <clears throat> feeling of order. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had a high or a blessing this week? Yeah. Oh, man. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I've never lost my voice. First time I've ever lost my voice. Uh, but yesterday I got to, got to spend yesterday with Hannah and I and, and Jenny and we went down to Clemson and went to the football game it's the first time Hannah had been back and she said you know my whole last semester um, I think I spent more time on campus today than I did my whole last semester we were there for like six hours yeah. and uh, so it was really good for her to go back see her friends because that was a lot of bummers for a senior here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Brittany graduated online. Yeah. She didn't care. But... Right. Well, Hannah didn't care at the time. But now when she looks yeah. back on it, yeah. she's, she's real disappointed she didn't walk. And, and even though it would have been, you know, nobody would have been there, but she, the closure she's really missing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and so the good news is that Jesus holds the, the past and the present and the future. Uh, what are some things that you're hopeful about or something you're looking forward to? Knowing that Jesus holds your future safely in his hands. I'm hopeful for a voice. <laughs> hopeful he for healing. Yeah, I, I feel fine. I mean, I'm still have a little cough. Anytime I go in and out, my nose runs. But does lemon and honey help? Um, tea, uh, honey, honey tea, honey tea. Help. Lemon. Lemon. I would think lemon would be kind of. It cuts slime off. Oh. <laughs> it's a clean. Oh, that's right. It does clean copper pennies. <laughs> you just need all that stuff cleaned out. Right, right. Right. That is will probably be a short lesson. Yeah, yeah, well, we can, I found one for that. So <laughs> got a little bulletin book. Hmm. <clears throat> well, there's good news in knowing that Jesus holds our future, that God holds our future, and that we can be hopeful. Even in the midst of maybe some bad things happened this week, or some disappointments this week, uh, we can look forward to the future because we know that God holds our future and we trust Him. Let's pray. Lord God, we are thankful <clears throat> that You are the Alpha and the Omega. We're thankful that we are part of this big plan of Yours uh, from beginning to end. And, and we may not be able to see the ending, but we know that it's there. And we trust, Lord, that You'll be there when the time comes. And uh, we are grateful and thankful that uh, we can have hope in daily life uh, because we know that uh, all time and all space and all of our lives, 
uh, are in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, very good. <clears throat> so let's just look at John today. Yeah, I almost the pastor off. <laughs> so today's lesson comes from this the court scene of Jesus, uh, John eighteen. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, "Are you the King of the Jews?" Jesus answered, "Do you say this on your own accord, or did others tell you about me?" Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, and I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not of this world. And Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born. And for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is the truth listens to my voice. <clears throat> uh, I see this week, you know, we seem in America to have a kind of preoccupation with, uh, oh, you're a lawyer too, that's funny, uh, <clears throat> is the courtroom dramas. It's been a long time, I mean, even from when I was a little kid. I wonder what's so fascinating about courtroom drama. Because you have, because it, it, it's, it's sort of the plain God, if you will, because you're, you're deciding someone's fate. And in some cases, you can decide life and death. Yeah, well, I hadn't thought about that. <clears throat> Do you watch LA Law or anything like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that guy kind of fascinated about the twists and the turns. You know, how's how, how's he going to get out? Because it's always kind of predictable that somehow justice will prevail, right? Really At least on television. Whenever the like the defendants can make up some big speech that like clarifies something huge, and it's like. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But, but this is a different kind of court scene that we see. I mean, this is a court scene. Pilate, Pilate is... Um, so Pilate is the governor of Judea. And he has the authority to sentence Jesus. And so he's, he's essentially judge, jury, all in one. Um, but what seems to be happening to Jesus in this story? Right. <clears throat> but, and and focusing on if he if he really you know, his so the king the, the kingdom of God really is what we're talking about something that transcends just law and order and the civilian sense of the word the you know secular sense of the word is that this is so much bigger than just what's going on right now right here. Right. Yeah, it's interesting because it's, it's so, um, it's like justice in some ways doesn't seem to prevail in this case, right? And the, at least what we're used to, you know, in the courtroom dramas, the underdog seems to be going down. And, and, uh, and the only question I've always had is like, like, that's the best defense you can come up with, Jesus? I mean, you can't. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he couldn't have prevailed per se, or it wouldn't have been part of the whole 
right. wouldn't have gone as they, as they have, as they were intended to go. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems that in this case, uh, <clears throat> as usual, the, the religious leaders on one hand, uh, the political leaders, uh, and the military leaders, the Romans and Pilate. So Pilate is a governor appointed by Rome. It really seems like they have all the power in this situation. And I ran across a story this week about <coughs> the Freedom Riders. And uh, so have you ever heard of the Freedom Riders? I mean, I've heard of the name, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, so that's a really cool story. So, they, so in the 60s, these, they're riding all over the South to try to uh, uh, get people to uh, register to vote where they could or to fight against laws that were, that were discriminating. And uh, so what they would, they would meet with all kinds of force. And it's, sometimes it was dogs or water cannons or whatnot. And they, but on this particular story, they get arrested and they put them in jail. And they, uh, they tried different ways to kind of break their spirits. So they leave the lights on, play loud music, salt their food. So then they, they thought, they, oh, what we'll do is we'll take out half of the mattresses. And that'll make them fight over the mattresses that are left, right? And so at first it kind of did. But then <clears throat> somebody, in the, uh, somebody in the group started singing some gospel song. The story really didn't tell what the gospel song was. <coughs> but, so, you know, more and more of the jail starts to sing, starts to sing. So then what, the, in, what they do is they take the remaining uh, mattresses and they stick them through the bars <laughs> out into the hallway. <coughs> and they take back control. <clears throat> and they take back the power. And that's right. You know, when we think about Jesus, you know, he took back the power, but in a different way, right? Because I think what Jesus is kind of saying here is, you're judging me on one court, but there's a higher court. <clears throat> there's a higher court of God. And, uh, and that's the court uh, that I am king of. And, um, and so, uh, you know, it's like two ships talking in the night, right? Because Pilate's thinking temporal, and Jesus is, has this much bigger picture that he's, that he's trying to help Pilate and help, help all of us see. And you're right, if Jesus takes control of the situation, then, then that derails uh, the plan, right? And, um, <clears throat> but it is kind of like, uh, some other defense could have witnessed maybe to, to Pilate, but three days later, you know, Pilate and the rest of them are trying to figure out, well, now, wait a minute, this is not way we, this is not how we thought this was going to end, right? The other thing this <clears throat> particular uh, passage makes me think about is the, that question. Would there be enough evidence to convict us <coughs> of being a Christian, right? Or would there be enough evidence to convict us of not being a Christian? And if we were, if we were on trial, you know, what uh, what would the evidence be, right? <clears throat> Which I think is always a challenging <coughs> thought for us. Um, I suspect that the preponderance of evidence would be that we have failed more often than we have succeeded. Um, but the good news is that in the court of God, at that point, we'll have Jesus on our side. And you know, Jesus will be the one... <coughs> excuse me... <coughs> Jesus has gone to night school and become a, you know, a solicitor. <laughs> well, it's the, it's, the, it's the effort of continuing to get back up and 
devote yourself to the to the effort again and again rather than you're not going to be perfect. That's not how you were created to be. But it's the idea that you the idea in being maybe perhaps more of a successful Christian that it seems to be that you recognize that you do fail, but that you keep trying to pursue that goal at the end. <coughs> and it's so hard, I think, for a lot of a lot of people to really conceive of something beyond what is their reality right now. And to think of that transcendent kind of spirit and there's something else better out there and more and this really is such a I'm, I'm nanosecond in the grand scheme of all things. I think that's just a really tough concept for a lot of people to really get yeah. the process. Yeah. 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 Um, I did a little wedding this week and uh, you know, kind of asked them, you know, my, my standard question, you know, is like, um, you know, why, why, are you, why do you want a pastor to get married? I mean, why not just go to the Justice of the Peace, right? And, and the, the standard answer is, well, we believe, but we don't go to church because church is full of hypocrites. <clears throat> and as you were thinking, as you were saying, I was thinking, you know, maybe the biggest witness we have is, is that, Maybe the biggest evidence that we have to present in our case is, is when we say, I failed. Because what I say to people is, <clears throat> yes, the church is full of hypocrites because all of life is full of, we're all hypocrites, but we're forgiven hypocrites. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, and so as I was thinking about that court scene and because um, these it's funny how these two Sundays work together so this is the last Sunday but next week is the first Sunday but next week we also talk about the end of times uh, and <clears throat> we will all stand before God at the end of times <clears throat> And that's where Jesus will stand uh, on our side. And that, in that higher court is where Jesus' power will be. Um, and I think part of what Jesus is trying to do in, in, in the Gospel today is he's trying, to, he's trying to remind Pilate that, like you said, this is temporal. Um, there's going to be a higher court someday. And there's a bigger picture. Um, and in that court, uh, Jesus will stand in our defense. And, uh, um, and in that court, it's kind of interesting, even if, we're, even if we're convicted in that court, what's the good news? As I suspect we will be. <laughs> You'll still commute your sentence in a way. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, by Jesus not defending himself and paying the ultimate price as innocent, he's now actually paid our price as being convicted. And uh, and so the good news is that uh, is that our sentence has been paid in full by someone who has died on our behalf as an innocent. Um, and uh, so when you think about this whole courtroom, you, I was thinking about, it is actually very predictable that this servant king would pay the price uh, for us at the, uh, in, at the higher court. Um, uh, because we've seen that on the cross, <clears throat> Jesus has already paid the price. And the cross is where Jesus becomes uh, the King of Kings, the King of Jews, King of the Gentiles, the King of the world. Um, and 
uh, through baptism, the gift is that we are all one in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and we've seen, we've seen His experience, we've seen others, and our personal experience is, is that... Uh, um, is that we're all going to have we're all going to experience death in our life, and some someday it's going to be our death too, right? Um, um, but there's uh, uh, but what we know about the good news is that Jesus has already conquered that life, and it was already on the other side. And uh, I don't know who somewhere I ran across it, you know. They make this big deal about you know, Elvis leaving the building. You know, the king has left the building. But the good news is that our king has not left the building. And that our king is always here and always with us. And because the king of kings uh, has set us free, then Paul's words ring true to us that we are free indeed. Um, <clears throat> and so we're... we're uh, Free to profess. Lead on, O King Eternal. Um, kind of short today. <laughs> kind of cut my, my sermon down. Like everybody at the first service says, hey, why don't you get large eyes more often? <laughs> but... <clears throat> I, like there's all those people that I was gonna they need to talk to and like catch up with down to New Year. I couldn't like talk to anyone because I just couldn't use my voice. It's so it sucks. Uh, now do you do you have you ever been in court or are you kind of behind the scenes lawyer kind of lawyer? I, I am behind the scenes now, but I have as a, an in house counsel, but I what I did start my career in the courtroom, yes. As a Yeah, my my stepson is just the opposite. He's he's been uh, kind of behind the scenes, and he wants to get in. <clears throat> Be careful what you wish for. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> When you're in a, in a case, the more popular the case is, then it becomes more about judgments as to who you are as a person rather than who you are as a professional. And that can be really challenging nowadays, especially given all the publicity and all, all uh, how public everything is. You can't have that, which is good and bad, right? They're, it's mm -hmm. good because then less, less funny business can should go on, but um, like that we watched the runaway jury <laughs> this past weekend, and I said, you know, those things really do happen. People do shop juries, people do buy juries, you know, and you, it, it goes against, I think, for all, many of us that really fall under that old school principle that justice should be blind, and you should you know, exactly be given by what the letter of the law is, and that's your job, and when you see that it, it's influenced, unfortunately, by so many people's weaknesses and susceptibilities to money or fame or greed or whatnot. It's discouraging sometimes, and that's why I think I would stay out of the public eye in doing that, just because it's not. There are so many forces that get involved with that that mm -hmm. reach their tentacles now into your family or into your friends, and it's just it's unfortunate that that has happened. But it really takes somebody that has a strong will about them that can be steadfast in, in, 
in the law when they're practicing in public forums like that and also have a really strong family system that they can practice and protect as well. Right. Yeah. Where did you go to law school? Uh, in Cleveland Marshall. Cleveland Marshall. Where is that? Cleveland. In Cleveland. Yes. Cleveland. Because my stepson started at something Marshall in Chicago. Gosh, what was his name? He finished up at Wake, but. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Landed where I need to be, but there are a lot of avenues that you can go into, and there are, there's a lot of good that you can do, depending on what your talent is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wake Forest was a good school. Well, let's proceed with communion. <clears throat> We'll bless Angeline when she comes back. <clears throat> we come and we are welcomed by God into this celebration of Holy Communion. For God supplies our every need and gives us this meal to share. We come to the table admitting our failure to follow God's word. And so we pray, Jesus, we need your presence in our lives through bread and wine. It was on the night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we boldly pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Thanks be to God. And the blood of Christ is shed for us. Drink it, all of you. Amen. And so we are thankful for the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who strengthens us and preserves us for all of time to be in the presence of God. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, love and serve the Lord, and have a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully you won't have lost your voice. Hello. Hello. The Lord bless and keep you. We've already done communion. So. Yeah. I, you know, I have a, had a kind of a short sermon because of my voice. So. You mean the last song? So. Or you did the song? No. No, we're good. <clears throat> Have a good week. The Lord bless you and keep you. Bye. Bye.
So I feel fine. I just, you know, my voice. Still yeah, yeah, yeah. I got prednisone earlier in the week. I was like, <laughs> that can do that. Yeah. I came in and and Patty's like, what's with all the emails, Pastor Carrie? I'm like, I'm on prednisone, okay? <laughs> yes, that's him. My, my, my dad had to take that for a while for something or other. My mom was about to go crazy. Man. <laughs> Go chop a tree down or something. <laughs> we're going to, I'm going to Raleigh. That's, we're all assembling at the... Do you know where G is? Oh, it's right here. Your G? Yes, G for her. Stickies. <laughs> well, we drive is, up Thanksgiving. Is this, uh, is this Rich's drill weekend? Oh, yeah. No, no, wait, no, 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 drill was, no, two weekends ago. No, uh, Jonathan had a uh, soccer tournament in Virginia. That was my G, uh, not my G. So they drove up there. Uh oh, it's around oh, somewhere. Oh, here it is. How did it get way over there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is it usually the second weekend? Is that what? It's the first weekend, Jonathan. Oh, it's the first, first weekend. Week, the first full week. The first, like, the weekend, oh, the week. Yeah. Weekend starts in the first week, and it's usually not that long. So the first week, the weekend after the first full week. Uh, gotcha. Generally speaking, but <clears throat> yeah. as you know, right? Yeah, I, we had for a long time we had first and third because it was the unit was so big down at Charleston. And, uh, I don't know how. I don't know why we ended up going, but eventually they went back to just the first one weekend. So, but. Yeah, that was. <laughs> well, we always had we had enough chaplains, so we didn't have to go twice. We had coverage, but but also kind of made it good every once in a while. You're like somebody needed to switch, you know. You're like, oh, we got something going. So that was helpful. What is laryngitis like? What is it? What is it like biologically? What does it do to your your vocal cords? <clears throat> yeah, I think your vocal cords are swollen. So they can't. Like, they can't vibrate like they need to vibrate to right. make sound. Because that's what's. That's how it all started with a sore throat. And it's just been like really sad. Because like when I was, whenever I was not talking, I felt like I felt like I could just talk longer, but then I tried to talk and not like it's like if you if you um, if you're lying on your arm it's very frustrating. and you fall asleep. And when you don't move it, right, it doesn't really necessarily hurt, but when you try that let's try it. All right, well, have a good week and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Very good. We will not be here next Sunday because we'll be traveling back from Cleveland. So you're having to Cleveland for Thanksgiving. We're celebrating on, on Friday. Oh, well, we're celebrating on Saturday. So. Why? We're doing a mini one, well, because... Uh, because you have... You have, you have when you have grandkids, they they have to go with their side of the family one day, and so you, oh, you trade okay. off. So this year it's their turn to be to have Thanksgiving Day. So it'll be the four of us for Thanksgiving Day, and then two days afterwards. Yeah, well, we're everybody gonna go. for we're gonna go down on Thursday, and then we're gonna have like just our like immediate family, aunts and uncles, just the close yeah. people that we hang out with initially. And then on Friday, since the one mom of the aunt can't. Be there. She can only make it Friday, so we are celebrating everyone on Friday. Oh, man. Like, how many people were you talking about? So we can walk with it.